In a game of the Pokemon TCG, you usually need to knock out your opponent's Pokemon and take all six of your prize cards in order to win. You need to use damaging attacks in order to KO Pokemon. However, that doesn't mean that every card in the game can deal damage through attacks. So today, we're going to look at the best Pokemon cards that can't actually damage your opponent's Pokemon. And at number 10, we have Palkia and Dialga Legend. Before going into details on this card itself, it's important to clarify just to how this two-part card works. In order to play Pokemon Legend from your hand, you need to put both halves of it onto your bench at the same time. Pokemon Legends also give up two prize cards when knocked out. This Pokemon has two attacks, neither of which can deal damage. For one water and two colors energy, Sudden Delete lets you put one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their hand. For two metal and one colorless energy, Time Control puts the top two cards of your opponent's deck into their prize cards, but makes you discard all metal energies attached to itself. Time Control is the main reason this card makes it onto this list, and the attack was a central piece of a unique combo deck. Prize Mill was a deck that sought to put all the cards in your opponent's deck into their prize cards by looping Time Control every turn. In the Pokemon TCG, a mill deck tries to win the game by getting all cards out of your opponent's deck. This works because of alternative win conditions in the game's rules. If you can't draw a card from your deck because you have none left, you lose the game. In order to set up the combo, you need one Magnezone and one Floatzel GL level X in play. Magnezone's superconductive Poke Power lets you attach an electric or metal energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon, but puts one damage counter on it. When one of your water type Pokemon is knocked out, Floatzel GL level X water rescue Poke Body lets you put it and all cards attached to it into your hand. With all three of these Pokemon in play alongside Palkia and Diago Legend, you can use superconductivity to set up time control every single turn. Then if your Palkia and Diago is knocked out, Floatzel puts it and the non-metal energies attached to it back into your hand. Because Floatzel has no retreat cost, if you promote it to the active spot after your Pokemon is KO'd, you can replay the Palkia and Diago, attach the added energies to it, retreat Floatzel, and then set up time control again thanks to Magnezone. Despite your opponent knocking out your Pokemon Legend worth two prize cards, they can never win the game by doing so since time control immediately gives them two more prize cards they have to take in order to win. Once set up, very few strategies could break the lock, and would eventually lose since all cards in their deck would get put into their prize cards. Even if you couldn't establish the combo win, the deck played attackers like Magnezone Prime and Magnezone Level X that could end the game quickly. Palkia and Diago Legend being a key combo piece without dealing any damage makes it a great card to start off this list. And at number 9, we have Jirachi. This Pokemon has a fantastic attack and a great Poke Power that facilitates it. When you play Jirachi from your hand onto your bench, its Stardust Song Poke Power lets you flip 3 coins. For each heads, you can attach a Psychic Energy from your discard pile to itself. For one Psychic Energy, Time Hollow lets you devolve a number of your opponent's Pokemon in play up to the number of energies attached to Jirachi. Most of the time, Stardust Song will let you attach 1-2 to two energy cards to itself, something helpful to many different decks. In decks using Magnezone Prime, Stardust Song could potentially represent an additional 150 damage by providing 3 energy cards that can be put into the Lost Zone by Magnezone Prime's Lost Burn attack. Due to how the standard format was going in the 2011 World Championship, Jirachi's Time Hollow was also an exceptionally powerful tool for taking knockouts. Since the format was full of Stage 2 Pokemon that use Rare Candy to skip their Stage 1 evolution and evolve directly from their basic Pokemon, Time Hollow would be able to KO many Stage 2 Pokemon very easily. Any Magnezone evolved from a Magnemite by way of a Rare Candy was threatened by Time Hollow if it had 50 damage counters on it. Decks using a combination of Yan Mega Prime and Kingdra Prime could put 50 damage counters on any Pokemon during their turn with a combination of a Linear Attack and Spray Splash. Later on in the standard format, Jirachi gained a fantastic partner in Kyria. For two water and one colorless energy, Glaciate deals 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Kyrium decks frequently use ways to quickly set up Glaciate to spread damage as early as possible. One common method was to use Electro Prime's Energy Might Poke Power to KO itself and attach all energy cards in the top seven cards of your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. Jirachi also had reasonable synergy in this type of deck. Since many of the best attackers had colorless energy requirements, decks using Curium and Electrode could afford to play a few Psychic Energies to grab off of the deck with Energy Might and attach with Stardust Song later in the game. If you were really in a pinch against a deck with multiple damage evolution Pokemon in play, you could use Energy Might to attach from the deck to Jirachi. Since Time Hollow lets you devolve regardless of what energy is attached to you, you could potentially swing a game in your favor by devolving every Pokemon on your opponent's field. Sadly, this standard metagame was full of powerful basic Pokemon that Time Hollow did nothing against, so Jirachi only saw play in the earlier stages of the format. And at number 8, we have Phantom. This Pokemon has a simple Ascension attack. For one color's energy, you can search your deck for a Pokemon that evolves from Phantom and evolve it. Phantom stands out amongst many other Pokemon with Ascension attack because of what you get to evolve into. Trevenant was a disruptive stage 1 Pokemon thanks to its Forest Curse ability. While Trevenant was in the active spot, your opponent couldn't play any item cards. 
Phantom and Ascension functionally guarantee that your opponent would only get to use item cards on their first turn. Going first, you could simply evolve into Trevenant on your second turn. If you went second, Ascension lets you set up Trevenant from your deck on your first turn. If a strategy relied on item cards couldn't fully set up on the first turn, Force Curse would be game winning on its own. Going second, Ascension also helped the deck set up a Trevenant break a turn earlier than it could without. For those that don't know, a Pokemon Break is a special type of card that goes on top of a Pokemon with the same name. Pokemon Break could use all the attacks and abilities of the Pokemon under it. In practice, this gave Trevenant an immensely threatening attack, which spread damage on all of your opponent's Pokemon. For one Psychic and one Cause Energy, Silent Fear put three damage counters on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Against decks like Night March with multiple low HP Pokemon, such as the Jolt take in play, Silent Fear was capable of taking multiple KOs in a single turn for little investment. The attack also got around effects like Mr. Mime's Bench Barrier ability because it placed damage counters on Pokemon directly instead of doing damage. The Stadium card Dimension Valley also lets you use Silent Fear for a single Psychic Energy, having the attack requirement. The need for very little resources to use such a strong attack backed by incredible disruption made recycling the cards needed to keep a continuous stream of attackers going very easy. A single Super Rod could shuffle back a Trevenant, Trevenant Break, and a Psychic Energy to use Silent Fear all in a single card. Even though decks built around Trevenant saw some play before Phantom was released, it can't be understated how important Ascension giving turn 1 access to item lock when going second was for the deck's viability. Even after Trevenant rotated out of the standard format, Phantom and Ascension meant it saw continued success in the expanded format. Decks in the expanded format were usually far more reliant on powerful cards printed over the years, so Phantom and Trevenant were even stronger of a lock there. Phantom enabled a highly consistent item lock in both the standard and expanded format. And at number 7, we have Bunnelby. This Pokemon has two great utility attacks and the Omega Barrage Ancient Trait that lets it attack twice each turn. For one Colorless Energy, you can use both its attacks. Burrow lets you discard the top card of your opponent's deck, whereas Rototiller lets you shuffle one card from your discard pile into your deck. While in the standard format, Rototiller gave Bunnelby a legitimate niche in a wide variety of decks that could afford to take a turn to recycle key resources they otherwise couldn't with item cards. To exemplify how many decks wanted access to Rototiller, in the 2015 World Championship, Bunnelby saw play in four distinct strategies that all made the top 32 of the event. In decks using strong single prize attackers like Donphan, they could take a turn to use Rototiller twice since they gave up less prize cards per individual knockout than your opponent took. Rototiller was the main attack players looked to use, but Burrow was also competitively relevant. In control decks, Burrow could be used to mill at your opponent slightly faster than you otherwise would be able to, although these strategies did mainly use Bunnelby for Rototiller. In the expanded format, Bunnelby saw extensive use for the exact same reason it was in standard. Many Zorark GX decks appreciate the ability to shuffle back powerful item cards into their deck, but where Rototiller really excelled was in stall decks. Stall decks in the expanded format rely on recycling key one-of cards that are useful in specific situations, something Bunnelby excels at. It's also worth noting that Oranguru, a card that you shuffle back any three cards, was so good in the format it got banned from the format. The effect of Rototiller is very worthwhile, even if you get one less card compared to the banned Oranguru's resource management. And at number 6, we have Solrock. This Pokemon's Luna Shade Pokebody prevented all colorless Pokemon from using their Poke Powers as long as you had a Lunatone in play. For one Cause Energy, Call for Family lets you put a Lunatone from your deck onto your bench. Lastly, for one Fighting Energy, Hyper Beam lets you flip a coin. And if you get a Heads, you discard one energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Solrock mostly saw play for the effect of Luna Shade since there were many strong colorless Pokemon at the time. The most notable at first being Pidgeot. Pidgeot could be played in almost any deck. Its quick search Poke Power lets you add any card from your deck to your hand once each turn. Pidgeot helped to boost the consistency of many decks using Stage 2 attackers, since you could always find the missing pieces to set up your Pokemon. If a deck wanted to deny the utility of Quick Search, players had the option of using Disruptive Stadium card like Battle Frontier, which shut off all Poke Bodies and Poke Powers of Evolved Colorless, Dark, and Metal type Pokemon, or Solrock. While many players opted to use both in their decks, Solrock and the necessary Lunatone were very easy to search out of the decks with Hole and Mentor. With this single supporter card, a player could search Solrock, Lunatone, and another basic Pokemon to set up their strategy while hindering their opponent. Lunatone itself was also a disruptive Pokemon due to its Soul Shade Pokebody. If you had Solrock in play, Fire type Pokemon couldn't use their Poke Powers. With cards like Mag Cargo and Flareon EX in the format, there was a good chance that either Solrock or Lunatone would hinder your opponent's strategy. Even after Pidgeot rotated out of the standard format, the pair continued to see play to handle Pokemon like Delcaddy and Flygon EX. For its entire lifetime in the standard format, Solrock was used to counter strong colorless Pokemon, and easily deserves a spot on this list. And at number 5, we have Evatol. 
This Pokemon only has one attack, but that attack is extremely powerful. For one Fire, Psychic Darkness, and two Colors Energy, Amazing Destruction automatically knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon. This card is eligible for this list since the attack doesn't do damage. It just KOs the defending Pokemon with no additional effects or downsides. For most of the card's time in the standard format, Amazing Destruction was far too difficult to set up in order to be competitively viable. With the release of Silver Tempest though, Yvettel slotted perfectly into one of the most dominant decks in the game's recent history. Lugia V-Star decks had no issues setting up Amazing Destruction when they needed to take a crucial KO. Thanks to Lugia summoning V-Star power, you could put two Archaeops from your discard pile straight into your bench. Each of Archaeops' primal turbo ability lets you attach two energies from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. Setting up Amazing Destruction with two primal turbos active was easy. All you had to do was just attach three Aurora energies and one double turbo energy from your deck. Lugia decks use Yvettel to take high HP VMAX Pokemon that would otherwise be too hard to one-hit KO, such as Mew VMAX. Its use wasn't as complicated or nuanced as other cards on this list, but Yvettel was a key component of one of the strongest decks in the history of the Pokemon TCG. And at number 4, we have Frogadier. This stage 1 Pokemon has the Water Duplicate attack. For one Water Energy, Water Duplicates lets you play up to 3 Frogadiers from your deck onto your bench. Much like Phantup earlier in this list, Frogadier was part of an evolution line, in this case Greninja that made setting up your evolutions easy. Greninja decks were a strong meta contender during the 2016 and 2017 standard formats, with Frogadier being a big portion as to why. Water duplicates helped circumvent one of the historically worst issues with evolution decks and make Greninja decks extremely consistent. Usually, setting up a board of evolution Pokemon is fairly slow since you either need to find the proper stage 1 Pokemon to evolve into, or find a stage 2 Pokemon plus a rare candy. On top of that, you also need to set up your basic Pokemon ahead of time since you couldn't evolve the same turn you put them into play. Access to water duplicates meant that if a single Froki was capable of evolving at any point in the game, a single water energy meant you could set up all the stage 1 Pokemon you need for the rest of the game. With cards like Dive Ball or Trainer's Mail, finding the needed Froki or Frogadier was trivial. Once fully set up, Greninja was a difficult deck to stop. With only a water energy, Greninja could use either of two strong attacks. Shadow Stitching dealt 40 damage and prevent your Pokemon from using Pokemon abilities during their next turn. Alternatively, Moonlight Slash dealt 60 damage plus 20 more if you returned a Water Energy attached to Greninja to your hand. With a Water Energy in hand, Greninja's Break Giant Water Circuit ability lets you discard Water Energies in your hand to put 6 damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon. The Pokemon Break also had 170 HP, a ridiculously high amount for a Pokemon only worth one prize card. Due to that high HP, many decks couldn't deal with Giant Water Shuriken putting 60 damage on one of their Pokemon and getting locked out of abilities. If your opponent managed to clear Greninja Break, they would get to add all parts of the evolution line back to their hand if it got knocked out with a Splash Energy attached. Despite discarding energy every turn, a Greninja player would rarely run out of energies in hand due to Starmie's Space Beacon ability, adding two water energies from your discard pile to your hand every turn. Even in the expanded format, the full setup is so powerful that the deck has seen some competitive success despite not taking advantage of the wider card pool as well as some other strategies. While Greninja is the face of the deck, Frogadier is one of the main reasons it saw much of its competitive success. And at number 3, we have Ditto Prism Star. This Pokemon only has a single ability. When in play, Almighty Evolution lets you put any Stage 1 Pokemon from your hand onto Ditto to evolve it. Almighty Evolution is one of the very few effects in the Pokemon TCG that lets you evolve into a Pokemon without the proper basic Pokemon on your bench, and fittingly saw widespread play while in the standard format. If your deck played multiple Stage 1 Pokemon, Ditto Prism Star was almost always an auto-include, since it lets you put whatever Stage 1 Pokemon you need at the time into play. Almighty Evolution also meant that you could play Stage 1 Pokemon without their corresponding basic Pokemon in your deck something especially relevant for Stage 1 Pokemon that might be only worthwhile in specific matchups. One good example of this card's flexibility is its usage alongside Alolan Muck, while the two were briefly in the standard format together. Normally, playing a Stage 1 for only specific matchups alongside the base 60 to evolve into it can be somewhat clunky. Almighty Evolution lets you take advantage of powerful Stage 1 Pokemon without needing to play the Pokemon they actually evolve from. In a matchup where you didn't need Alolan Monk, you could just evolve your Ditto into a thing like Zorak GX, Lycanroc GX, or Alolan Ninetales. This same flexibility gave Ditto a bit of a surprise factor as well. If you put the card into your bench, your opponent had no way of knowing what you were going to evolve into since the options were limitless. Simply including this card into your deck meant that using multiple evolution lines was much easier because Ditto Prism Star acts as a copy of every basic Pokemon you needed. With Almighty Evolution, it wasn't uncommon to see decks using multiple Stage 1 Pokemon with only a single copy of their corresponding basic Pokemon doing very well at tournaments. The applications for Ditto Prism Star were only limited by your imagination. 
and it's seen play with an immeasurable amount of unique decks and strategies across both the standard and expanded format. And at number 2, we have Holen's Cast Form. This Pokemon has the Delta Draw attack for one cost energy, which lets you draw a card up to the number of Delta Pokemon you have. Delta Draw wasn't the only text the card had though, as it was a Holen Pokemon. Each Holen's Pokemon has a special effect that lets you attach itself from your hand to one of your Pokemon as an energy card. In Cast Form's case, you attach it by returning one energy attached to the Pokemon you attached it to, and provided two energy that counted as every type. That effect to let you attach Cast Form as an energy card is what made it a multi-format all-star. And there's a few good reasons for that. Firstly, it was an energy card that counted as a Pokemon card within the deck. As a base Pokemon less than 100 HP, it was searchable with the very widely played Holon's Mentor supporter card. Decks playing Holon's Cast Form would grab it off of Mentor if they needed an energy attachment for a turn, or needed a way to fix awkward energy costs on attacks. Although there were other Holon's Pokemon that provided two energies that counted as all types when attached, Cast Form was the only basic Pokemon with that effect so it usually saw play over the other options. Even the supposed downside of having to return and attach energy to your hand was regularly a benefit. By attaching this card to a Pokemon, you guarantee that you would have an energy card in your hand to attach during your next turn. As an energy card that functionally replaced itself in your hand with a new energy, Holland's Pokemon gained their player extra card advantage. In a format like the 2006 and 2007 standard environment, regularly viewed as one of the most grindy and skill-intensive formats in the game's history, that card advantage can make a big difference. Secondly, Holon's Cast Form being an easily accessible energy card that provided two energies of all types enabled a style of deck building that allowed for multiple different attacking Pokemon of various types. Decks using Blastoise EX loved having access to Cast Form since it let them play far more powerful cards than it otherwise could have been able to. Some of the deck's best attackers like Lugia EX and Steelix EX were wholly enabled by the ability to attach a single energy that counted as two different types. Blastoise specifically made an even better use of Holon Cast Form than other decks, since you could use its energy ran Poke Power to reattach the water energy you just returned to your hand with Cast Form. Cards like Gold Star Latios and Latias were only ever playable due to the existence of Holon Pokemon, as their powerful attacks were otherwise too hard to build a deck around. Lastly, Delta Draw was a very good setup option for many decks at the time. If you were playing a deck using many Delta Pokemon, a Holon's Cast Form in play could easily draw anywhere from 3 to 5 cards on your first attack. There were a lot less strategies that could use Delta Draw compared to those that wanted the effect to attach as an energy, but many of those Delta Pokemon decks were relevant to the metagame. Strategies using either Flygon EX loved Delta Draw as a setup option, since Trampage, its basic stage, was a Delta Pokemon. Raichu Executor decks loved to use Delta Draw to set up in the early game, while loving access to the energy effect it had in multiple energy types needed across all of its attackers. Holon's Cast Form had many great applications and shaped in its standard format but there was one card that had an even greater impact on the game's history. And around this list at number 1, the best Pokemon that can't deal damage is Cleffa. In the eyes of many old school players, this card single-handedly saved the Pokemon TCG after one of the worst formats in the game's history, and for very good reason. Before the release of Neo Genesis, the set Cleffa was in, the game was populated with decks trying to deal as much damage as possible as fast as possible, with cards like Erika's Jigglypuff boosted by plus power. Players were also disrupting their opponent's hand with Rocket's Sneak Attack and the Rocket's Trap while attacking with Jigglypuff. Thanks to the incredible draw power provided by broken trainer cards like Professor Oak and Bill, decks looking to lock out their opponent on turn 1 were insanely consistent. Even though they weren't impossible to beat, as they almost always lost when they didn't win the die roll, these decks were extremely frustrating and all around not fun. Cleffa single-handedly stopped these types of decks in their tracks. To start things off, Cleffa had the baby rule. Whenever a Pokemon with the baby rule was attacked, the player had to flip a coin. If tails, the attack did nothing. The baby rule was a mechanic that couldn't be interacted with, and there was no way to stop it. Even though this card only had 30 HP, the baby rule made dealing with Cleffa shockingly difficult, something many decks desperately needed when Erika's Jigglypuff was KOing everything else on their first turn. Although players had already used hard to KO Pokemon to try and handle the first turn strategies, Cleffa was the only one capable of meaningfully refilling your hand after it got taken away by Rocket's Sneak Attack and Rocket's Trap. For one colorless energy, Eek lets you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 7 new cards. Now, even if you got disrupted on your first turn, you had a way to reliably draw back into a fresh hand of 7 cards. Even outside of dealing with decks trying to win as fast as possible, Cleffa was a fantastic card in every possible strategy. Since Cleffa was so widespread, Decks using Erika's Jigglypuff and hand disruption cards fell out of the format. With those decks not being meta-relevant, the format became far slower and focused on resource management to inch out advantage over your opponents. Eek being an attack that drew 7 cards meant that the slower decks didn't need to disrupt their hand to draw from Professor Oak as much. Without discarding cards, players could keep key resources and cards in their deck with Eek. 
Cleffa's utility over Professor Oak was especially valuable in evolving strategies since they wouldn't have to discard any Pokemon needed for their evolution lines. Cleffa is one of the best cards to ever release for the health of the Pokemon TCG. Every deck in every form of is illegal plays as many Cleffas as possible. The card is a big portion as to why many players feel the base Neo Retro format is one of the most skill intensive, rewarding formats to play. For single handedly defining a format and being in every serious competitive deck at the maximum number of copies possible, Cleffa easily deserves a top spot on this list. Alright, and that's the video. If there's any cards you think we may have missed, or have any ideas for future videos just like this one, please let us know down in the comments below.